Welcome back my friends to Mount and Blade to Bannerlord. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to find the best follower or best companion in the game and also how you can take advantage of those companions in your party because as you expand your party you're actually allowed more companions in there and these companions develop their skills and you can level them as you go and play the game. So it's actually recommended to recruit the maximum amount of companions at the start of the game so they level up their skills with you and you can really you know choose what skills they specialize in to then help your party. So I'm going to go through everything but let's really start out here with how exactly we find all of the companions in the game. So what we're going to want to do is click on the bottom left this clan icon just here and this takes us to this page. We can then click on our face and we can go to home just here and this will bring up the encyclopedia tab uh, which is kind of hard to find to be honest with you so what we have here is effectively like a list of everything in the game so if you ever want to find something this is the place you should come to learn about it so let's click on heroes and if you scroll down to the bottom here it has occupation wanderer and this actually lists every single follower or companion in the game that you can find so there might be a specific companion that you want that you maybe read about on wikipedia or i suggested to you in this video as being the best healer in the game um, and then you can find them in this list and you can find out where they are for example um let's see here urta willow bark if we click on her we'll then get her character sheet so basically you can see here her skills so you can click on all these characters here and you can see what they're actually good at before you go and try and find them. So you can see she has a 60 in medicine. Now this will level up as you play and as you go on, but in terms of characters having special skills, medicine is always going to be like a max of 60. So you're going to want to hire her into your party and then she'll slowly improve her medicine skill. But in order to actually hire her as a follower, you're probably wondering where in the game she is and how you actually find her. So you'll see on the right here, it actually says that she's last seen at Sinopia. So if we click on Sinopia, it tells us this is the city and we can click on this track button just here. And then... And then if we go and exit out here... And then you can see on the bottom corner just here, it says it's in that direction. So if I go ahead and fly over there, we know that she is currently in Sinopia. However, by the time you get there, she might have moved. So you need to keep checking every couple of days of travel if she's gone to another settlement. Uh, she'll be going as fast as you do, so you shouldn't really lose her. But essentially, once you get there... What you're going to do is go to the settlement, like this settlement for example, and then you're going to go to the tavern district. I recommend saving the game before you do this by the way. So go to the tavern district and then you're going to see every single time you do this, there's going to be a random NPC that spawns at that town. So if you actually save the game a little bit further back from the settlement and then you go there, it will randomly generate a potential companion that will spawn at the location in the pub. So you can then go and speak to her if you like and we can talk to her. And she'll have a whole backstory after we introduce ourselves um, and you can listen to her backstory. I'm not going to read it. Uh, I'll spare you my dyslexic reading skills. Um, and it says, yeah, sounds like you have a good head for business. Um, but I've noticed something. More Denars are spent on the war than anything else. So if someone raises an army and doesn't want to lose their investment to infected wounds and fevers, well, it might be worthwhile to employ me. Actually, I can use someone with your talents. Very well. And she says that she wants to be hired for 3,168 gold. That's a lot of money. Uh, and she also has a healing skill of 60, by the way. So you could also hire her. Is this man dancing behind her? I don't, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> so let's say, for example, we're going to go ahead and hire her. Um, we can now exit out to the menu and I'll show you what you're going to do next. So if we go back to our clan menu, we can see we've got two out of four companions right now. This is the one we just hired and we can change her clan role 
to the surgeon. So basically what will happen now is whenever you have wounded members in your party, she will start leveling up her medicine skill even further. But it always starts off at 60 as being like the max amount. She's also going to enter into battles with you. Um, so she can potentially die if you've got like permadeath on and whatnot. But one thing you can do is make a separate party just for your companions. And then you can just tell them not to attack. So they're always going to be safe and they'll never die. And you know, you'll never have to worry about them. Unless, for example, you hire someone who's very good in combat, which I'll get to in a moment. But if you also go to your character menu, you can actually change over to your companion. And we can go to her medicine skill. And she's actually going to level up with the party now. She's only level 11 at the moment. However, once she levels up, she gets another focus point, And you're going to want to invest them all into medicine because her purpose in my party is going to be healing everyone. I don't really care about her being in combat. So I want to max out her focus points in medicine as soon as possible. So as soon as that's maxed out, she can we can then choose what perk she has and you know we can continue to level up her skills and whatnot. But you'll also notice that she actually has only one intelligence. Now we've hired her. So actually, she's not a very good healer. She has seven vigor, but only one intelligence. So what we're going to do is say, you know, we don't actually want her as a healer because she only has one intellect. So we're going to reload our save. So here we are in Sinopia. So if we go inside, we can go to the tavern district and you'll see Willow Bark is still here and we've managed to catch her. So let's go ahead and speak to her and we can employ her now and see if she has a better attribute sort of setup. And I'll explain a little bit more about tribute so you guys understand that as well in a moment. So you can listen to her backstory and once again, I'm going to skip it. Um, I'm going to say, yeah. Oh, wow. She's only 900 gold as well. That's so much cheaper. And what's funny is that she has the exact same medicine skill. <laughs> so if I go back to my um, followers here and I have a look at um, Willow Bark, who's the person we just employed, you can see she has an intelligence of four. And she also has a medicine of 60. She doesn't have any focus points invested yet and she's only level 10. But we can we can put focus points in there as we level up. And we can also put more points into intelligence as well. Now this is kind of up to you to a certain extent. But the reason why it's important for her to have at least a reasonable level of intelligence is because intelligence makes it easier to learn bound skills and also raises their learning limits. Because intelligence represents the aptitude for reading and theoretical learning and the skills that are bound to it, so medicine. So if she has a high intelligence, so she is actually the best healer in the game. Her other skills are a little bit low, but to be honest, like you don't want her really doing combat anyway. And obviously don't forget to make her your surgeon, otherwise she won't level up the skill and your party won't use her ability at healing to heal your party. One thing that's worth noting, however, about the difference between these two healers is this healer has a merciful trait. So she's going to like you being honorable and, you know, being a nice person. Whereas the other healer we just met previously and didn't want in our party has a deceitful trait, I believe it was. So she would be fine with you, like, raiding villagers and stuff like that, and she wouldn't have an issue with it. However, you might lose um, friendship with these other people later on in the game if you choose to side with them, and they have traits that kind of conflict with how you're going to run your party. Now, as for the other skills in the game, you also get... There's a lot of people who seem to be decent at roguery. For example... Apsy the Robber, as you'd expect, or um, this person with Long Knife in their name, are deceitful people and they start off with 60 roguery. And you can obviously pick them based on their skill set, however they're all rather similar. So what I'd recommend is when you do find them, save the game and then hire them and then double check if they have a good cunning skill. Because as you guys can see, cunning dictates how fast you're going to level up your roguery skill so if he's sitting in your party with level 60 roguery that's great but if he only has like level one cunning it's going to level up super slowly from that point onwards so you really want him to have a good cunning skill as well 
and then you can put him as that in your party. Now, the other ability you can have in your party is a good scout. So let's have a look at finding a good scout. As you can see, my scouting skill is only level 9. So I actually hired this guy because he was really cheap called Charig Frostbrand. And as you can see, since he's been my scout, he's now got level 81 scout and it started off at level 60. So, you know, as he levels up, try and put his focus points into this. And he's also fairly competent in combat as well. So he does a decent job. I usually, you know, give him a bow and tell him not to run him because he also has an archery skill of 135, which is ridiculously good. So, you know, archery and scouting, he's definitely going to be doing well in combat and also providing scouting skills for your party. And he's got that like even really nice balance. So his name is Churig Frostbeard, if you want to find him. As you can see, he doesn't have a beard though. And that triggers me because I don't understand why he doesn't have a beard. So the last uh, key skill you can have in your party is somebody who has a good tactic skill. So Ilmir the Lucky has uh, the best tactic skill in the game of 60. Uh, and he's also decent in combat as well. And he's got Valor and Generosity. So you can use his tactics and that will really help you get out of combat and, you know, plan a battle and so on. He's going to have the highest level compared to other people. And he's also a Sturgeon as well. So bear that in mind for his background story. And currently he is over here on the map in the snowy regions of Revel. Here he is. Let's go and have a chat with him in the tavern. Hi there, I don't think I know you. My name's Danny. All right then, brother. Let's hire him. You are a most deceitful son and brother. 623 gold. Very cheap for someone who has such a good skill in tactics, though. So as you can see, Ilmir the Lucky has a 60 skill in tactics. However, he has zero cunning, which is pretty goddamn tragic, to be honest. So we are going to have to invest all his attributes into cunning if we want him to be our main tactics professional. Now, you can actually choose whatever follower you want if you just happen to like someone and start investing in their skills if they are specialized in it. However, um, Ilmir the Lucky actually has eight control. So he's going to be a very good archer. So I'd recommend keeping him in your party for combat as well. And he also has six figure. So he's actually decent in combat as well as with tactics. So that is a general overview of how you're going to be collecting companions for your team. But do bear in mind as well, that pe these people literally come butt naked. So whenever you buy someone, as you can see, she's literally got nothing. She doesn't even have a horse. You can actually buy her some decent things, weapons, armor to keep them alive, keep them safe. You're also going to find some companions that are extremely good in combat, by the way. So it's worth taking a look at these people too, hiring them, checking if they have a good vigor and control skill, depending what their abilities are attached to and then hiring them if they do. Because, I mean, this lady has 200 two-handed skill, which is pretty good. She also has 100 athletics and riding skill. So she's Corina the Black also has 120 one-handed and two-handed skill. Um, and you guys need to go and check their attributes and see how good they actually are. But I will leave that up to you. Guys, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give the video a like, because I'd really appreciate that. And uh, I've got loads of other Mountain Blade guides in the playlist linked below, like how to level up quickly, how you can basically farm your character skills up super fast and so on. But guys, thank you so much for watching. And don't forget you can subscribe and press the bell icon if you don't want to miss any future Mounts and Blade combat and our conquest of the entire map. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.